I was, um, well, you know, I've been there uh, twice in in space of 10 days. Um, one of the things that it made me aware of was that there is, uh, in London, there is a kind of groundswell against offshore financial centers that's being driven by a number of factors. Um, first of all, the U.S. is coming out of a recession. U.K. and Europe are not. Uh, unemployment re it remains very high in, in the U.K. Uh, budget deficits are ballooning. Uh, so it's a very sort of difficult and negative environment over there. And I believe that uh, overseas territories and crown dependencies are uh, to some extent being used as scapegoats and distractions from domestic policies and domestic policy failures. Uh, on top of that, you have a, a, a core of uh, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, people who are you know, feeding the hungry and, and all that sort of thing in, 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 in various parts of the world, who also have latched on to this notion that either multinational corporations or so-called tax havens are responsible for these countries not having any money these poor countries not having any money. Uh, so there's a, that, that I was very surprised at the virulence of that sentiment that exists over there right now. And, and it is this environment that the, the Premier is referring to and he said we need to get our message out there. Our message is to a significant extent being overwhelmed by that noise. And therefore, we have to up our game. We have to increase our volume uh, from, um, uh, I think we kind of had a, an assumption that what Bermuda does is understood over there. You know, we've been devoting quite a few of our resources and time, if not on the government level, but certainly on the ABIR level and ABIC level to make sure that people in the United States and in Congress, places like that, understand the value of Bermuda to them so that they don't pass any legislation that uh, is harmful to Bermuda. We've kind of um, not emphasized what's going over in the UK. And so when I got over there, it became clear to me that um, we had a lot of work to do uh, over there because we just kind of assume that because uh, we have this relationship with Britain, we have a British representative in our midst at all times, and we have two of them in our midst at all times, at, very, at the most senior level, that somehow there's an understanding uh, over there of what Bermuda is all about. And I was surprised and dismayed to find out that that was not true that they don't understand what Bermuda is all about. They continue to lump us in with uh, other jurisdictions that are engaged in offshore banking, that have secrecy laws, uh, that are involved in money laundering. These are things that Bermuda is not involved in. We have had uh, uh, a tax treaty with the United States since 1985. Uh, we have been at the forefront of, 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 of anti-money laundering uh, uh, practices and, and legislation for, I would say, a decade and a half. Um, and as the Premier said, we've had, uh, we know who owns companies in Bermuda. International companies, we know who own them because we've required them to tell us since the 1940s. Um, and we've required them to tell us because we wanted to protect ourselves against them. But now they say they want to protect themselves against us. That's the irony that I found when I was in Britain. So bottom line is that um, you know, we have to up our game in terms of, of our communication to let folks over there know that Bermuda has a continuing, mutually beneficial business relationship with the United Kingdom and with Europe, because I believe that that understanding is uh, much further ahead 
in the United States. We've been reasonably successful uh, in the United States. We've kind of um, dropped the ball a little bit in Europe, and we've, we've got to up our game in that.